The seventh generation of home consoles began in November of 2005 with the release of the Microsoft Xbox 360, then continued with the Sony PlayStation 3 on November 17th of 2006, and the Nintendo Wii just two days later on November 19th. Historically, emulation of these consoles has been a mixed bag. While the Nintendo Wii has been emulated for many years, thanks to the excellent Dolphin emulator, the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 have been much more complex to emulate. All three systems utilize a PowerPC architecture. The Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 in particular have very similar architectures with multi-core PowerPC processing and shader technology. But as of the last 12 months, I've been keeping my eye on Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 emulation on the PC, and there have been significant advancements in emulation for both systems, and it's time we took a closer look at them. So, it's no secret that emulators exist for both the Xbox 360 and Sony PlayStation 3. Now really, this is something that a lot of people have approached me and asked me to look at doing some content for, and I haven't really given it much thought, only in the last six months or so, where there's been significant advancements in emulation on both systems. So with that said, this is the first of a two-part series where we explore emulation for the Xbox 360 and Sony PlayStation 3, starting with the Xbox 360. The story of Xbox 360 emulation begins in 2011. In 2011, developer Ben Vanek had just switched jobs from Microsoft to Google, where he was focusing on GPU-related software development. In his spare time, he came up with a short list of projects. Ben set out with an idea to build an Xbox 360 emulator. With some initial blog posts on how he would go about building the emulator, the feasibility of one, and how well it would perform. His conclusion was, yes, it should be possible on modern hardware with a good level of performance. When Ben was on holiday in Tokyo and bought some Japan region Xbox 360 games, he was frustrated that he could not play them on his North American Xbox 360 due to region locking. So he decided to revisit his Xbox 360 emulator idea and started to develop one. Ben has prior experience with emulation and worked on a Sony PSP emulator in 2007 known as PSP Player. His Xbox 360 emulator was to be named Xenia, and its main goal is meant for the experiment and research and to completely reverse engineer the Xbox kernel in order to maybe someday play commercial games on a PC. Xenia was developed in C++ and initially used OpenGL as the renderer. Because Ben worked on Xenia in his spare time, progress was slow, but in March of 2014, Xenia's first ever Xbox 360 game was up and running with only minor graphical glitches. The game ran slowly due to running in debug mode and using an interpreter core, but Ben promised that the performance would improve. A year later, Ben made good on that promise and showed A-Train running in full speed with the slow interpreter core being updated to a newer just-in-time recompiler. On January of 2016, Ben released the first ever public release of Xenia with the OpenGL renderer. It showed early promise with some games booting into the title screen. In February, the OpenGL renderer was scrapped and replaced with the newer Vulkan API, which is a high-efficiency cross-platform graphics library. Vulkan improved performance and also helped with compatibility and slowly more games were becoming playable. The switch to Vulkan was the right move and by March of 2018, quite a few Xbox Live Arcade games were running very well with excellent performance. In May of 2018, we saw the significant breakthrough of commercial games starting to boot and become playable past the menu screens. And what a game this was. Halo 3 was running on a PC. Although there are clear texture and frame rate issues, this was a major milestone.
Around the same time, a game developer known as Triangle, with previous experience in the game industry with ports of Shadow Warrior Classic Redux and Luft Rousers to Android for Devolver Digital, became interested in Xenia when he saw the Call of Duty 4 Alphas running under emulation. He was impressed with the fact that Xenia could run games and decided to help with the project. Triangle wanted to work on emulation development but didn't know where to start. So he worked on a new branch of the code utilizing DirectX 12 instead of Vulkan. When I asked about the change to DirectX 12, he said that it's clean and simple to use and DirectX 12 offers the rasterizer ordered view pixel shader functionality or ROV as it's sometimes known as. And this is very useful for accurate render target emulation. This is something that Vulkan currently does not support. With Triangle on the team, work on Xenia and DirectX 12 really hit top gear, and just recently in November, Halo 3 took center stage once again. Much improved over the earlier May build, Halo 3 has now become playable and suffers from only minor glitches and audio sync issues here and there. So, how good is Xenia, and how well does it run on an average PC? Does it really play Halo 3 perfectly at good frame rate? Okay, for this part, I'm going to walk you through setting up Xenia on your PC. It's really simple to do, and the best part is, this emulator does not require a copy of the Xbox 360 kernel. You just need a copy of the emulator and some games. The first thing we need to do is download the latest nightly build of Xenia from the Xenia website. Make sure you download the latest DirectX 12 build. I'll leave a link in the description below for the most up-to-date release. Now you need some Xbox 360 games on your PC. My advice here is do not download ISO images from the internet. Apart from the obvious piracy issue, Xbox images are usually large in size and there is no guarantee that they'll even work. Most of you will probably own an original Xbox 360 and a bunch of games. There's different methods to rip an Xbox 360 game to your PC, so I will show you my method, but please feel free to tell me yours in the comments below. I use a modded Xbox 360 and a copy of Freestyle Dash. From here I simply insert an original Xbox 360 game disc into my DVD drive and select the copy DVD to hard drive option. I'm essentially ripping the entire game to the Xbox 360 hard disk. Once my game is ripped to my hard drive, I then plug in my network cable to get my Xbox 360 on the network, then transfer the game via FTP to my PC. I do this with all the games that I want to play on Xenia, and now I'm ready to go. If you have an external USB drive, you can rip your game directly to that drive and then move that drive over to your PC, so you don't even need to FTP the files over. Xenia will also attempt to boot an ISO image as well as Xbox Live Arcade files. In order to test Xenia and your game rip, simply double click on the Xenia icon, select File Open and then provide it with the default.xcx ISO image or Xbox Live Arcade file and with any luck it should boot into your game. I tried a handful of random games with different levels of success, here's a sample.
While compatibility overall is still quite low, more and more games are becoming playable. I find that the majority of games that work the best are Xbox Live Arcade games, but games such as Halo Reach and ODST are now starting to become perfectly playable as well. I even tried some old Xbox 360 homebrew and that runs great too. My old SNES 360 port plays perfectly under Xenia. How cool is that? Now you can develop homebrew for the Xbox 360 without needing the hardware itself. That is very impressive. While Xenia has been in development for many years, the last 12 months have been pivotal, showing rapid improvements in game compatibility. As of November of this year, about 50 games are playable on Xenia, with Halo 3, ODST and Reach well on the way to becoming playable complete experiences, and Halo 4 in very early stages of rendering too. I can't stress the importance of Xenia enough on the PC. With Xbox Live disappearing on the original Xbox, how long before Xbox Live on the 360 disappears? 5 years? 10? The importance of preservation cannot be understated. Xenia allows you to play these games again, early demos, unreleased betas and alphas without needing expensive development hardware. Oh, and if Microsoft won't give the fans Halo on the PC, then developers will find a way to do it themselves. Well guys, that will do it for this video. Let me know what you thought about Xenia in the comments below. I think it's a very awesome emulator that has a lot of promise. I think in the next 12 months, this emulator is just going to continue to get better and better. Now, before I go, I am running a competition to give away an original Xbox, a controller, a composite cable, and a modern vintage gamer t-shirt. So click on the link in the description below to get entered. Now, I did have some questions about the Xbox in the last video. Yes, this Xbox is modded, so you will be receiving a modded Xbox to play any region games around the world with this particular Xbox. So you don't have to worry about modding the system yourself if that was something that you were interested in doing. But please get entered into the competition. Tell your friends and good luck. There's about 25 days left to go and I will be drawing a winner in early December so guys get yourself entered and once again good luck well guys I've rambled on long enough that will do it for this video don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll catch you guys in the next video bye for now